In the video today, I will walk you through what I feel as uh, the most important and practical mathematics topics that you could probably educate yourself with and then hopefully employ in your day-to-day -day quotidian life in ways that hopefully allows you to accelerate your own goals, where you're headed, how you're doing. And I think in general that mathematics can be quite a quite an important tool for living life most optimally. Not in a very rigid, uh, say, software programmer sense, but in the flexible, malleable, pragmatic sense, how we deal with things using our own heuristics and also these applied methodologies can sometimes allow for a syncretic way of living and being. Uh, in general, I will always advocate that you enlighten yourself to as much uh, degree as possible on almost every topic. I, I do believe though that delving deep into some areas is more beneficial long term, allows you to be more assiduous and prosperous uh, in the way that you deal with the things that happen to you in your life. And also understanding this complexities maybe of modern life as it can relate to anything from computers and programming for instance but also in more mundane things like personal finances the economy and uh, maybe any other social programs or things like that, that you may be in part of so in general uh, hopefully you've allowed yourself to maximize your mathematical educations or you've at least been uh, able to I'd say be remedial or supplement your existing knowledge with the uh, surface of great sources on the internet and textbooks on basically every single topic, and this includes mathematics. Now, mathematics is one of those topics which is very divisive uh, and can contrast those who feel as if it's something that's uh, difficult for them naturally versus naturally it comes to you. Uh, but I think with anything, when you deal with it enough, uh, and this can be for any language per se, is that once you absorb enough of it passively and actively in that you put yourself in the scenario where you have to use it as the only tool for communication, by and large, you will get acclimatized to it. John von Neumann had the same premise around getting used to mathematics rather than knowing mathematics. And I think that probably holds true to a large degree is we discover mathematics more than we invent it. And then if it can be discovered, it can be experienced and then you'll get used to what its implications probably are. Uh, the baseline of mathematics, I think, should definitely be algebra and um, calculus, making sure that you know how to manipulate algebraic equations and also use calculus to find uh, optimization and other um, derivations, things like that. So in general, that's probably the best baseline to start. But then going forward, you would probably ponder on to how it can actually help you rather than just being numerous and having the baseline level of understanding what interesting fields or sub categories are there in mathematics which would actually allow you to implement mathematical learnings in your life other than in the obvious ways and that's why i'll come in and hopefully give you just some context i won't run you through these from a boring lecture standpoint this is more how i think about them myself and apply them uh, as you know, rigorously or you know soundly as possible um, so in general i probably advocate and would utilize seven or eight methods or mathematical sort of schools of thought in my daily or weekly life, something like that. Uh, the most interesting one for me, uh, maybe not the most used, but the most interesting one for me is Markov chains. Markov chains are a series of probabilities which allow for the, you could say, uh, gauging or calculation of a likely change in probability space. So you transition from one probability space to the next and what the likelihood of those are allows for you to understand what is it the pathway that's most probable least probable and to get a, a good fix on exactly where I'll be I use this a lot in understanding my life it's to say you can almost philosophically put yourself on that lily pad uh, as the frog would and then understand what lily pads lay around you and you can maximize the possibilities of landing on certain more maybe propitious lily pads than deleterious ones. And this can be said for Markov chains in general is that they allow you to think maybe more systematically about probability spaces and that you can have fi uh, finite or infinite spaces and discrete, non-discrete spaces and how exactly you move from vector to node around the edges uh, and that transition. So like I, I feel as if Markov chains for me are very, very uh, personal. I, I like to utilize them not I would say mathematically, but in the conceptual zone of my decision making is that you put yourself on the most august or propitious or 
uh, serendipitous uh, events that will happen to you uh, if you're in the right area at the right time. It's kind of that old adage, the um, skill meets uh, luck to create opportunity. The next one was related probably to, uh, this is, uh, my experience was in, that, in economics, but in general, you can have this idea of maxima and minima and that you can calculate what would be the best from the outcomes and the worst, or the min minimize the maximized outcomes in the, both in a local and a global. And this can be done obviously very simply through mathematics, but in general, I think you can also feel as if this is applied to your life and that there are times and places where the maximum amount of, or the minimum amount of success and failure can be felt in relation to what you could call as that space. I think then you probably would understand this best personally, um, but in general, I like to view this as something you can uh, deploy within your life and understanding what is a maxima, minima, and an optimization strategy just for in general living. Um, the next one I'll go through here is the Monte Carlo simulation. So here, I think you have a fairly good understanding of what random means. Uh, random for us can be many things. Uh, completely random, it probably is not, but a calculated randomness I find to be useful, at least as a thought strategy perhaps or at least a deployable foundation of finding and discovering so if something feels as if it could be random then it best is to treat it as if it was uh, and this can go into how you simulate anything from a stock market to whether you're on counter or a pretty woman on the dance floor in general Monte Carlos are quite good at that simulation effect at least from our RNG standpoint and you can add things like brownie in motion and weighting and, and have a drift value and things like this to get you a, a, at least to add your priors and all these um, expected probability outcomes uh, conjoined to this is maybe um, probability in general and I, I do enjoy the Bayesian enjoy I employ uh, Bayesian probability a lot so making sure that you're dealing with priors and uh, particularly knowledge based when this is to say what's the probability of something happening given that you know something else related to that has ha already happened and then that you'll have additional marginal probabilities affecting what was the prior and so then you can hopefully triangulate or at least demonstrably force yourself to understand a probability more intellectually to so say you can deal with something that's probable by understanding what has or has not happened and how that would relate to the probability of said outcome. I know in reality or in real life, they use it a lot to find things like missing ships or um, planes, which have, which have ghosted off course and sunk in the ocean. Um, but in general, I do also use a lot of uh, information, inform, information of priors and likelihoods to go into my own decision-making. It's very decision-making based. Um, and as a segue to that, I think uh, we have Prisoner's Dilemma, game theory, things like this, uh, where we have a lot of games. You can structure a lot of things in your life as games. So trying to position yourself uh, and maybe conceptualize how your existence could work in a theoretical game structure. Now, almost none of these cases are me mathematically calculating probabilities or spaces or sets or supersets or anything like this in any algebra or uh, actual numbers. But I think it's, it's best to think of maths and mathematical concepts a bit more practically, as in how they actually apply to reveal either preferences or outcomes or information and how the analogy in real life can match what is a mathematical concept because there are a lot of interrelationships between mathematics and real life that maybe get lost on you if you're just at school getting taught, wrote, uh, learning from a mathematical perspective, which is mostly just theorems rather than actually seeing the practicalities. And then the examples given in theory in, in those books are not always represented as maybe as interestingly as they possibly could be. Um, but nevertheless, game theory, I think, is one of those very interesting ones where if you can design uh, or at least understand the game that you are playing, then you can understand the player's incentivizations and then likely choices. I think rationalization is not necessarily the one-to-one -one, uh, from a modeling perspective here, but in general, people are incentivized to do certain things in certain ways. And the more information you have on someone, the more praxeologically speaking, you can gauge what their likely chances and choices will be. Um, the related one to there, this, uh, I'll try to do this in a little bit of a, a harmony, harmonic uh, version of what I consider the stepwise versions of my mathematical 
uh, framework uh, is the logic and in uh, grander in a hypernym you've got logic as a as a, its own field but then um, in the subset you have what is defeasible logic for me which relates a lot to say rectitude and morality how can we think about certain moral decisions from this defeasible idea that is you have these strict rules which will always defeat defeasible rules which always defeat defeat and so the chain of hierarchical command on certain moral ethical topics can be fairly structured and rigid on these lines as long as you intuit them to the own degree that some things are superseding others and some things are uh, say subordinate to others and so you do end up garnering what is I think a fairly functional uh, pragmatic yeah, logic system here where it doesn't it can be a bit fuzzy it doesn't necessarily have to be so harsh and rigid um, then you can also have things like combinatronics uh, I find combinatronics to be fascinating just from a theoretical point of perspective but also dealing with it practically can be very useful in that conceptually in, in combinatronics you have all of these factors and um, inputs, variables, which can coincide with uh, each other. And you can match them to each other in certain ways that allow for you to be systematic with your thoughts, understanding certain things in certain ways and how they come together. What is the chances, the probabilities? What is the map, that are the mental map that I can create with these functions? And how exactly can I look at my life from certain given priors? This goes a lot into the rest of the previous models and um, um, uh, subjects that I've described here, but it's to say that in combinatronics, you, you do have a lot of these same interrelated um, theories going into the probability space of certain outcomes. And that if you have, and here's just the, um, the Polyurn theorem, where we can say like, if something happens early enough, uh, it'll impact to a large degree all subsequent outcomes. And this can be seen in life and those who perhaps are successful or lucky early in their careers can think of themselves as compounding a lot of these decisions in that way. And I really like this theorem from a practical perspective because you can think of yourself as if you've had a very early good start, it's much more likely that you'll be able to repeat processes and be in situations where the same or similar result from a from an objective good or bad point of view will be there. And so if you've had a bad start, then it's also, once again, more likely that you'll continue to have what I would consider a curse almost upon your existence because once you've suffered in that way, it's hard to snap that losing streak. Uh, and th this is why it can feel very superstitious around your life and your circumstances because winners tend to keep winning and losers tend to keep losing. Uh, and this can maybe inform you as to how that happens, that it's almost systematic and it's almost mathematical. And then lastly, I think more broadly as well, is that you have statistics. And I like to think that I'm quite good at statistics, but even a basic statistical understanding is of super importance. I would think almost the primacy of all mathematical knowledge should come into statistics from a practical perspective because understanding you, yourself, your actions and everyone around you and how they interact with you on a basis of descriptive but then maybe probability based comes out of statistics. Uh, and I've, I've found it to be very, very useful, particularly for political uh, discussions and economic uh, theories, etc. But in general, it's never a waste to know more about statistics. Uh, you can even look at some of those more uh, lauded uh, intellectuals like um, Taleb, who talks a lot about black swan theory and uh, outliers and things like this, uh, which are very practical ways of dealing with statistics in your life and understanding that the root cause of many things can be studied to a degree, can be found, identified, and then uh, understood. And, and understanding things is the first step of the road to addressing them. So in general, that's my advocation here and from a practical point of view. If you're looking for very specific tools to equip yourself with to deal with reality with your life from a mathematical lens and this can be very very useful and all these things for me without going into something like physics or chemistry have had profound impact on my ability to reason but also understand my own lived experience maybe from a more objective point of view and then decision making becomes a lot more um because it's serviceable uh, because you, you don't have this paralysis without the not knowing and you won't overanalyze things without the, the proper framework.